Hi, my name is Cadet Staffan. I'm an MS3 in the Excelsior Battalion and a junior at Cornell University. I've put together this video for you with some information on how to properly wear the Army uniform since I know a bunch of you are very new to wearing it and aren't familiar with a lot of the standards. So with the help of some other cadets in the program, we will cover topics such as personal grooming standards when you're in the uniform, some do's and don'ts of when you're in the uniform and how to properly wear it, as well as some other topics too. So I hope you find this informational and I hope you enjoy it. For this first section, I'm gonna talk about some of the do's and don'ts of being in uniform, most of which are don'ts. But the first one is you should not be listening to music while you're in uniform. So don't have any headphones in or earbuds or anything like that. Just walk and enjoy the sounds of the world around you. The second one is you should not be on your phone while, in, while you're walking in uniform. So you shouldn't be texting or scrolling through social media or taking a phone call. If you have to take an urgent call or send a text, just step to the side of wherever you're walking take care of that and then put your phone away and continue walking. When you are walking around outside, make sure that you're walking on sidewalks or walking pads. You should not be walking on the grass or trespassing through people's yards. And if you have to cross the street, make sure you're using a crosswalk and make sure you're only crossing when the walk sign is on. You should probably be doing that anyway, but it is especially important when you're in uniform to make sure that you're following all of those road rules. If you are carrying a bag while you're in uniform, like a, a drawstring or a backpack, that's perfectly fine. I know we all go to class in our uniform. So just make sure that when you do so, it is a neutral colored bag. So a black or tan or something like that. And lastly, you cannot eat while walking in uniform. So I also love to eat all of the time. So I know this is sometimes a struggle for me, but if you're hungry, just bring a snack in your pocket. And then when you get where you're going, you can enjoy that snack. Most of these rules are in place because as soldiers, we always want to have situational awareness. I know that's something that we talk about in combat situations, but it does apply in civilian world situations too. Just being aware of your surroundings, not being distracted while you're walking around is important as we're, we're representing the Army, the country, the ROTC program. You just wanna make sure that you're not caught off guard by anything and you're always aware of where you're going and what you're doing. Next, I'm gonna talk about a little bit more about the wear of the uniform. So first and foremost, you wanna make sure that your pants are tucked into your boots and your laces are tied and not hanging out. They're also tucked in. So I know you can't see mine right now, but I'll be doing a little clip later on, more specifically on different ways to tie those super long laces. So you'll see it better then. You want to make sure that your sleeves are buttons, buttoned so they're not flopping around. All of the zippers and pockets on your uniform, your jacket and your pants should be zipped up or buttoned and your jacket should be both zipped and velcroed. So if not one or the other, make sure both are closed. The patches, obviously you wanna make sure that you're wearing those correctly. So your name tape goes on your right side and the US Army patch goes on your left side. So a good way to remember that is that the US Army goes over your heart because we all love the Army. And then for the side sleeve patches, the American flag goes on the right side and you may think that it looks backwards, but it is not backwards. It is actually that way because when you are running into battle, that is how the flag would fly. So I always thought that was pretty cool. Um, a good way to remember that is that you salute with your right hand. So that is why the flag goes on your right arm. Um, and then your unit patch, which for us is the ROTC crest, would go on your left arm. The flag is lined up with the top of the Velcro here, and the unit patch is centered on this Velcro area. And then whatever your rank patch is goes just center on the square velcro just make sure it's always straight all the patches should always be straight and lined up the next thing about the wear of the uniform is the head covering so when you're outside you should always have a head covering on whether that's the pc or the fleece watch cap or the kevlar helmet you just you have to have something covering your head when you're outside and then as soon as you get inside you take that off and you you can store that in your pocket um, so that you can easily access it for when you go back outside. But yeah, so when you're inside, that always comes right off as soon as you step indoors. It goes right back on when you step outdoors. For jewelry, you should not be wearing any jewelry when you're in uniform. That's earrings, necklaces, bracelets, rings, anything. The only exception to that is religious jewelry. So I wear my cross necklace all the time. I never take that off. But when I'm in uniform, it has to be tucked in under my shirt so that it can't be seen. You can see that you can't see it 
when I'm in uniform, so you wouldn't know that it's there. If you have a problem with the flapping out, you could always um, tape it down, like athletes do that sometimes. So you can definitely do that, but I've never had a problem with that. So, yep. And that same thing applies for when you're in like the PT uniform and stuff too. For nail polish and makeup, if you have any nail polish and makeup on, it has to be like neutral colors and natural looking. You can't have hot pink nails while you're in uniform or bright blue eyeshadow. Um, when you're out of uniform, go ahead, rock that. But when you're in uniform, everything has to look uh, neutral and professional. And then obviously this is something that only really applies now, but any masks that you are wearing have to be neutral colored when you're in uniform. So black, gray, white, or those disposable masks. Um, we also have those super cool RTC masks that we got from the battalion. So those absolutely work as well. Your hair, I'm gonna go into this a little bit more later, but your hair should be in a tight low bun and off the back of your collar. And when you put on your head covering, it should not interfere with the wear of your head covering. I will go into more of that later um, with different ways to put together your hair into a military regulation bun and a couple of the cadets, other cadets from the program will be helping explain some different ways to put up your hair. And then lastly, when you're in uniform, uh, men, you always have to be completely clean shaven. That means that every morning when you wake up, you have to shave. And we have a little message from Cadet McCurdy explaining a little bit more about that. Hey everyone, Cadet McCurdy here. You can find the Army Grooming Standards in AR 670-1, just Google it. But for males, here are the fast facts you need to know right now. For hair, first, the sides have to be short. Not as short as mine, but if your hair touches your ears, go get a haircut. Second, the top can be a little longer, but it still has to be short. If you can take the front of it and touch your eyebrows, that's too long, go get a haircut. For shaving, first, you have to be clean shaven in uniform. That includes your ACU. It includes your PT uniform and it includes your army service uniform, your dress uniform. The only exception is if you have a profile. For mustaches, you cannot have the mustache crossing the upper lip and it cannot cross a vertical line drawn from the corners of your mouth. And that's just about it. For anything else, go look up that AR670-1. So when you're in the fitness uniform, the same rules apply. Your hair has to be within regulations. I'll talk about that a little bit more later about what that means for the PT uniform. You also cannot be wearing jewelry, um, earrings, bracelet, necklace, anything like that. Same thing applies with the religious jewelry though. So same thing, I still have my necklace on. I just keep it tucked in for all of the workouts. And then the other big thing is that make sure you're not mixing like civilian clothes with uniforms. So like, I know it's cold sometimes in the morning, make sure you're not wearing a civilian sweatshirt where the army issued uh, warm-up pants and warm-up jacket when you when you go to PT on those cold mornings. Another comment on wearing the PT warm-ups, if you're wearing the jacket, make sure that it's zipped up or just have it completely off. Don't wear it with it unzipped. When you're in PTs, you also want to make sure that you have um, either completely black or completely white socks that go above the ankle bone, so no ankle socks. Um, and also make sure they don't have any logos on them anywhere. So this next part really only applies to the females in our battalion as I'm going to be explaining how to put your hair up in a military regulation style bun um, that you need to be wearing when you are in uniform. Now males, you will be leading female soldiers in your future military careers. So if you want to watch this so that you know and understand their regulations, that would be awesome. But if you would like to skip this part, then you can skip ahead to the next section of this video. So myself and a couple of other cadets from Italian are gonna go through and explain how to do some hairstyles for varying hair types. And I will also include a couple of um, YouTube links to help you so that we can cover as many hairstyles as possible. So my hair is super long and kind of thick, as you can see. Um, so if you have long, thick, kind of unruly hair, this video is for you. So usually I start with a little bit of gel, um, not too much, just to like help slick it back. And then I put it into a low ponytail. So you see it's all slicked back and everything. And then I take that ponytail and I just braid it. Nothing fancy, just a regular braid. So 
which takes a while because my hair's long. And then I don't necessarily go all the way to the end, just like get most of it so it's kind of like together, one piece. And then I just take it and I pull it through a little bit, like right here, and the rest of it goes back around and wraps our main main hair around it. So that we're nice, tight, fun. And then you see that? And then if I have any flyaways, which I usually do. I'll just take the body pins and clip it up. So my hair is like a darker color, so black body pins and hair ties are perfectly fine. So yeah, that's it. And then, I mean, my hair's kind of behaving now, but if it wasn't, I could use some hairspray. This is like a batch, but usually that's not really needed. The hair gel or mousse or even just water is usually enough. And then, yeah. So as you can see, when I put on my you see, it just sits nicely right on top of it, and also my bun is my hair is completely off my collar, so it is well within right. So yeah, that's how I do it with my very long hair. Hello, my name is Cadet Ryan. I'm an MS3, and I'm here with another regulation bun tutorial. Uh, my hair is blonde and kind of wavy. So I like to use these blonde bobby pins. I found them at Target and they match pretty well. And then another thing is blonde hair ties. So if you also have lighter hair, make sure you get something that matches. And so the way I do my hair is I don't like slick it straight back. I found that it just increases frizz for me. So I naturally part my hair down the center. And then I maintain that part when I put it back. So I've already brushed my hair out a bit, but I don't like to do too much because then it gets even more frizzy. If you have like wavy or curly hair, then you know what I mean. So I brush it and just push it back with my hands and do a tight ponytail at the nape of my neck. So it's high enough that it's off my collar, low enough that it doesn't interfere when I put on my PC. So there's that. And then what I do from here is sometimes I'll just twist it around if I don't have a ton of time. But for the most part, I will braid the ponytail much like Cadet Staffen did, except my hair's a ton shorter. So I'll just braid that back. And I don't secure the braid with anything. Sometimes I'll use an elastic, but for the most part, it'll stay in a braid when I twist it. So that's a braid. And then you can kind of see like this fluff at the end that I'm just pinching. And so what you do is take the braid and just make it wrap around where your ponytail originated and tuck that extra fluff from the end of the braid underneath the bun. And then I secure that with another blonde hair tie, making it very tight. And so that, I don't know if you can tell, is what I have. And it's just low enough that it stays right below my PC and off my collar. Another thing I would recommend for anyone who has thinner hair like mine for PT is some of these bad boys. They look like old phone cords and they are great for not ripping your hair out while running. So I would recommend getting some of those. And then the last step is usually just hairspray to get rid of any of these flyaways. You can kind of see like my little halo of baby hairs, but I don't like to use gel, so I will use some super extra max hold hairspray just to keep everything locked down. So hope that helps. So I have really thin hair and I really suck at doing my hair. So I kind of use the uh donut bun method so the first thing you do is you just put your hair up and typically you kind of want to brush it so it looks nice to start off with so you just put it up in a ponytail 
and you don't want to put it too low or too high. You kind of just have to figure out where with your uh, patrol cap kind of where it's going to sit best there. And then take the donut and you just put it over that. And you arrange the hair so it's kind of all covering the donut. And you can get these uh, little like donut things at Sally's, which is kind of like a hair care place. Or you can typically get them at Walmart or some variations. And next you take one of those little rubber band ones, like I just did. Then you're going to take all that extra loose hair and you're going to spin it all the way around the donut. Take another one of the little rubber bands and just kind of slide it over. And you do it a couple more times until you think that your hair is nice and tight, not going to fall out, not going to have too many little pieces coming off. And that's simply all there is to it. It's pretty easy, low maintenance, not time consuming. The one exception to the normal military regulation low bun is during PT. So if you're in your PT uniform, you are allowed to have your hair in a ponytail or in a braid or something like that because not everyone's hair stays in a bun while they're working out. So personally, because my hair is so long, um, I do keep it in a bun when I'm working out, but you don't have to. So. As long as it's still back out of your face, um, don't have it down during PT, make sure it's not like constantly falling out, but whatever works for your hair. So if you want to just put it in a ponytail or braid it or something like that, this would be, I feel like this would be perfectly acceptable for PT. So it's completely up to you for that. So for this next section, I'm going to teach you um, a couple different ways to tie your boots and also just like little reminders. So first of all, you're going to want to cinch the bottom of your pants, just tie them off, do a little knot and a little bow, and then when you put your foot in the boot, you're going to want to make sure those pants are tucked in the boot um, so that they're not flopping around. Um, and then the trick with tying it is you want to make sure that you tighten it up as much as you can especially when you're going to be doing like a lot of walking and roughing and stuff like that so make sure they're nice and tight not too tight you don't want to be cutting off circulation but just like secure so that your foot isn't wiggling around in them and there's a couple different ways you can tie them so the trick that i learned my freshman year was if you tie these little knots at the end of the lace then what i do is i tie a regular knot and then just do a normal bow and then I pull the, the bunny ears of the bow all the way to the end so that the knot catches it. And then I just tuck these into the side. So you want to make sure that your laces are always completely tucked in. And yeah. So that would be perfectly fine. You can tuck the little aglets in if needed. But that would be perfectly acceptable. Another way to do it um, that doesn't work as well for like moving around and being active, but would work well for... Um, if you're going to be sitting for a while in uniform, is tying a knot. And then take both strings and hold on to them right here. And wrap them around the boot. Bring them up through this little loop and tighten it. So it just kind of like holds on like that. And then you just tuck the extra part again back into your boot. So that they are completely tucked away. So this doesn't work as well if you're like running around a lot and moving around a lot. Um, but I find that it works well if I'm like sitting in class in uniform. Um, some other ways that I've seen people do it is to tie a knot and then bring the laces around and tie that knot and that bow back up here and then tuck the laces either like into the boot or back into the laces themselves like that. So whatever works for you um, is good. Just make sure that your laces are always tucked in, not flopping around, and that your pants are um, always also tucked into your boots and not flopping around so that everything looks very put together and professional. So just like that, it's perfect. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you found it insightful as you start to wear this uniform more and more. 
As always, please do not hesitate to reach out to myself, Cadet McCurdy, Cadet Gerlach, Cadet Ryan, any of the upperclassmen in the program if you have any questions at all about anything to do with the uniform or just the program in general. We are always here to help you. We were in your shoes once too. My last reminder is that when you are wearing this uniform, you are representing all of our universities, you're representing the Excelsior Battalion, the ROTC program, the U.S. Army, and our country. So just wear it proudly and represent everybody well.